No, it's it's funny. It, I I am embarrassed by it. you. You say the term erasure, and and I get that talking about both in history books and uh, culturally, and I think that's what's so fascinating and important about Rutherford Falls, um, a reservation dogs. Like we're starting to see a little bit of a direct say boon uh, in representation. Uh, but I I've and I've talked about this before, but I think I grew up in a, a very supportive. Uh, I would say somewhat progressive or mo- moderate community. Um, m- my understanding of uh, indigenous history or people lied with like a brief comment in a history book. And then also I have i wasn't in Boy Scouts. I was in Indian Guides, which was a thing that happened back well, then. Well, unfortunately, that, you're canceled it was a, now, Jordan. <laughs> I can't, damn it. Damn it. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm addressing it. I'm addressing my blind spots. It was... But like that is something that I've looked at. Yeah. This is a bunch of well-meaning parents. It's a father and son situation. We went out into the woods. We had powwows. We got into circles. We made campfires. We picked uh, indigenous names. And then we, we danced your, around. What was I was, your, it wasn't in, called an indigenous name, Jordan. <laughs> what was, was it called? <laughs> right. I'm sure it was called an Indian name. Uh-huh, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, and and my name was Jack Rabbit. Uh <laughs> My dad was swift foot because he was fast. Uh, oh. And we did such traditional things like um, sing parody songs to I Heard It Through the Grapevine at uh, Ooh, uh-huh. Sleepovers. So uh, it was a very traditional uh, very much, yes. introduction into <laughs> the world of indigenous <laughs> cultures. Uh, but yeah. I look back at that and I, I do cringe. But I also, I, I, I don't, there, there was no, there, there was nothing malicious about no. it. There was, uh, it was, it was a, a, a truly important moment for me and my, my father. And I, we had such wonderful bonding experiences about what that was but i just see this ignorance of like oh this was uh this was a part of a culture in a place in america where we had no interaction with modern representations of native american culture and and we're pulling from like you know things that we had heard about things that we saw in movies yes. and and essentially you're, you're playing pulling, pretend yes you're pulling from what you have been given which mm-hmm. has been misrepresentations in popular media and i i say you know so many people have these experiences by the way this is like this is you're not like at all a minority in expressing this. Almost every white um, friend that I have or non-Native friend that I have has been exposed to this kind, as a young person, Mm -hmm. has been exposed to this kind of learning where it's like, we're doing an Indian thing. That means you get to pretend to be an Indian. And it's very interesting because there's no other real culture, a non-white culture that we do this to in our education, in, in our educational experiences. And I argue that if it were a foundational part of our educational experiences as young people to engage with indigenous content, to engage with indigenous knowledge, how much more aware we would be about um, creating sustainable, you know, energy resources and and creating balance with the natural world and experiencing the, the, our, our world in a more... Um, compassionate and and balanced way but we're getting such a a whitewashed version of it that is just it's appropriative and it's ineffective it doesn't I'm, really i might yeah, argue I, I, that part of the reason we don't engage with it is and i hate to say it but as i think it's seen as a dead culture in some yes. ways it's not as it's it, it, it's more uncomfortable to uh to put on the the culture of something that you see as alive and thriving in other parts yeah. of the world. And I think like probably as a child, it was like, I'm going to put on a feather and dance around here, not because this is offensive or I'm attempting to be a part of a culture that's happening, but because I'm essentially like a historical reenactor. I, yes. I approach it like I would a civil war uh, a reenactment yes. uh, because to me, it's not a modern movement or that has uh you know, modern characters that I could interact with and yes. offend to their face. And as Americans, you know, the the white colonial American paradigm is we uh, we we love to honor that dead culture that we killed. Let's romanticize it and you know, sort of make it this beautiful, like uh, peaceful thing, um, and which contributes to. Ultimately, the erasure of... Well, I, I'm going to, as I always do, I'm going to take an issue with this because I think that Americans are aware that there was in, there was a lot of injustice done and that 
I think people are hungry to learn more. I think they're very interested. Yeah. I mean, look at your show. I mean, you know, a lot of shows have one season and they're gone. You're being renewed because people, they're learning that that our natives are very, very interested in water protection and proper use of land. And, and the other thing that they would be very interested to, to know about uh, is the great honor of people who are older. Uh, you know, that in a, a culture where sometimes we, we don't honor as much as we should our older Americans. Absolutely. But I think people would love, I think they'd be fascinated with more education uh, about what happened in the history and where are we today and what can we do? At you're least so I am, right. because I, mean, I think I, people I are fascinated. You're people so are right. fascinated by this culture. They're fascinated, and for us, for me, living in Ohio, you know, we have an amazing history here. Absolutely, uh, of of the first settlements that were that were created. About how we had tough times, but how we came through it. So. What what I would say is I'm optimistic about the future. I think kids would gobble this stuff up, and your show helps. But we need more. We need a we need some great great stories uh, on you know on Netflix on our streaming channels about the whole the whole the whole history. You're absolutely right in the the fact that. Um I will say that there has been a, a generations of misinformation about indigenous people because we have been portrayed by white people. Um, but largely the, the, the informants like Jordan's experience, you know, it's like a, a troop led by a white person who's doing these things, you know. But and now, I was not in Jordan's troop. I refused to join okay, that you're kind of wrong, activity. But Jordan is what? canceled. No, he's. I, I mean, all this time, he's you telling me this didn't exist in Ohio? Oh, Come on, Casey. No, it's unbelievable, <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> what you did my god um but you know it's i think it's um what is happening and i'll i'll say specifically on the show rutherford falls and this is true for reservation dogs as well which is the other comedy um native centric comedy on um fx on hulu <clears throat> um is that people um our showrunners the executives who are creating these shows are native and so the sort of what I will call the storytelling sovereignty is being um, exercised. Native people, we have been grinding and grinding and grinding to get past some of these systemic barriers in our own storytelling um, to like overcome the erasure. And even these little small, you know, my background in educating my small town, like that has served me greatly in in advocating for you know, appropriate information and making sure that, you know, part of my work as a Native woman at my age in my generation is to sort of reclaim the ownership of our stories. And um, now that we have Sierra Teller Ornelas, our showrunner, who is Navajo and Mexican-American, and Sterling Harjo, who is Muscogee Creek and Seminole, running those two shows... They are make they are calling the shots. Mm. They are the ones hiring their their native, you know, cast and crew. They are the ones who are running the writers' room. So they are the ones who are developing the narrative. And that's why people are attracted to it, is because it's it is it's I, real. I, it's real. It's real. And it's, it's real. deep. Yes. And I, I take it that, that Jordan is not going to be able to make a guest appearance on your show after a while. <laughs> let, me do a, let me do a traditional karaoke night <laughs> on one of the let episodes. Let Jordan and I come on. Come oh on. We'll God. come on. And, you know, I would, we would, I would actually love. I would love. <laughs> yeah. Um, 